Hey everyone, this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, we're going to talk about this Elsus Amplimax Ultra 5G unit. This is a outdoor rated 5G modem and router that uh, just uses the Ethernet cable to get inside. They've been updating the firmware to uh, change the settings. I have other videos that will kind of go in more details about what it does, the setup, and that kind of stuff. But I've had some viewers ask about, hey, um, I saw they have some new firmware in there. Can you go through and show it? So that's what I'm going to do here on my tablet is I'm going to log in and just show you what this new interface is like as of August of 2024. Now, to power the device, you do have this little uh, power over um, Ethernet adapter that they have. Then I have the LAN port going to a another adapter, which is just for me. It's a um, Ethernet to USB-C adapter, so I can use my tablet because it's easier for me to show you um, with it this way. Okay, as always, I will have links to products like this Elsys and this USB-C adapter in the video description down below. And I do ask that you hit that like button for this video, as well as consider subscribing to my channel to get more content like this. So here in the interface, once I have it hooked up, either to a computer or tablet, you go to 192.168.10.254. That's the default address of this unit. And that's going to show you your... Uh, web interface here and this is what they have been changing now I'm in my basement so I get really poor signal down here you see that 51% you see that it's on T-Mobile and it's using SIM card 1 there are two SIM cards in there but it says that the connection is active so here I have my SIM card as automatic um, and you can set up things like failover so this failover uh, I, I do not have it uh, enabled but if I did have it enabled it would ping that address which down right there is Google and basically, if it doesn't receive a active ping, it's assuming that that SIM card or that service is down, and then it will switch over um, to the other SIM card. Um, so that's one uh, feature that's in there. There's also the um, auto APN you can see here in economy mode. I don't know what economy mode is, but somehow it reduces your internet consumption. Maybe it, sl it slows it down. Um, but then here in the, they call it here connection type. It's also in another page I'll show you later, but uh, basically this is the band locking. And uh, I'm going to show you where I think it's the best place to go to that, actually. And that's in the uh, the system status here. This is showing you um, my status of that SIM card. Now, what's um, uh, cool about this is that it, they did update this and make this a little better fidelity, where you can click See More Details. So here you can see I'm connected. You see my, my public-facing IP address, which is... Not actually true because uh, it's T-Mobile, and so then you see that 192.0.0.2. That's actually CG NAT, so that's a local IP address for this T-Mobile network. But um, the way their uh, network works is you don't really get a static public IP, at least on IPv4. So here on band N71 and N41, I can drop that down to see more details. And what that's going to show me is more of my signal metrics. And I really do like this layout because not only does it tell you like, hey, band in 71 is 600 megahertz. That helps you understand the signal that you're getting and the frequency that it's coming in at. It's telling you what the technology is, if, it, if it's um, 4G or 5G, and then your signal level, signal quality, um, all that kind of stuff. As well as the other important thing that you don't hear about a lot is this um, download bandwidth. So the bandwidth is... Um, an important factor for considering how much speed you're actually going to get with that same signal quality. So uh, 20 megahertz is pretty typical for N71. This N41, they've been increasing um, to get higher megahertz capability out of that, and that really helps your download speeds there. So 90 megahertz is um, certainly an improvement over the past uh, 20 that I was on um, before they updated my tower. So that's some cool information that's there in this uh, signal metrics and then down below that they do have the uh, cell ID which is the tower so each tower has different cells on it um, and that is um, telling you what that cell ID is you can actually look that up um, as well as your IMEI and uh, we'll talk about that one as well as as well as the ICC ID which is both kind of like serial numbers of the device itself so now the top you can see there's actually cellular connection and I can switch to Ethernet port. So Ethernet port now is talking about the cable coming out here, and that's showing you um, that the DHCP server is enabled and the MAC address that is being shown. Then lastly, I can click on System, and System is just telling me, hey, how long was this powered on for you know half an hour, and my supply voltage. 
that would be useful to, to know um, if you're running a long Ethernet cable. I think you can do 100 meters, so 300 feet uh, approximately, of Ethernet cable. But you can watch that voltage right here. And it says right here, if you're below 9 volts, then uh, the unit won't power on. Okay, so connection settings. Now, this is very similar to that main page with the auto APN. You can toggle it on and off. You can set a, a manual APN if you wanted to. But then now it's actually called band locking, which I think makes a lot of sense. And you can click that. Now, all these that are the dark blue means they're actually um, turned on. They're not um, disabled. So if I start clicking them like this, this is going to disable them. And so this will disable everything, you know, except for N41 and N71 uh, if I wanted to do that. Now, I could also disable all of the 5G ones, and that would put it onto 4G connection. And I can also do something where if I wanted to force it onto 5G SA, which is 5G standalone, I could actually turn off all of the 4G frequencies and have only 5G frequencies, and that would force the unit to 5G SA or 5G standalone which normally has a lot of benefits if your tower and infrastructure is up to date and supports it. If it's not, then it can be unstable and not very good. Um, unfortunately, they don't have a way to uh, force it to 5G NSA, which is non-standalone. Um, so at least not in the interface. There are some AT commands you can do if you wanted them to do it. And if you really are in a bind and want to do that, you can reach out to Richard at the Wireless Haven that sells these units for America and he can uh, help guide you through uh, those settings. Well, then you hit save, and then that would update and uh, change your band locking. But I'm not going to save mine. Uh, you can also see here connection mode or router or bridge mode. So this ca unit can be a bridge mode, but know that you're going to have a harder time getting back access to it once you do that. Most of the time, people really do not need the bridge mode, but if you want it, it is there, and you can enable that. Same for IPv6. Uh, typically, I leave mine enabled. Um, Ethernet port, this is just where you can change the address of this unit um, and as well as the DHCP client. Do know that if you change any of these, you do kind of need to know what you're doing and you want the address of the ELSIS unit, so that top one, to be in the same subnet or the same uh, first three digits as the DHCP client range that you set down below. All right, in the settings tab here, you can see the software. So this is the software that I am running. This was released at the end of July. And if we go to the Wireless Havens website, they have a help page here. That's where I got this software from. He does send out an email anytime there's updates to it. And you can see that um, uh, not only does he have links to the firmware, but you can also get other information. So you can see here, if I click on this link, it's going to uh, send me to this um, send AT command. So now you no longer have to plug in a USB cable and do this. I have a video on how I've done that before. But now you can actually send them over Ethernet by enabling this debug mode and then sending the AT command. So that's um, some neat features that they've added in this latest firmware. So if I go back to my utility, um, this is the blind uh, search. Um, that's in here. It's also on the main page. Blind search is allowing the modem to just search and listen for any signal. So this could be a different carrier, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, US Cellular. It's going to search for them and find out uh, how strong they are. And then the other thing that's uh, probably pretty uh, high interest to people is the TTL and HL configuration. So um, these are useful for you if you need to change these settings for your specific SIM card. This allows you to click enable and then change those numbers right here. So these are some of the new features in this latest firmware that's available. If you have any other questions, put them down below. I do try to read them and get to them. So thanks for watching.